Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max and I'm the host of this channel. We've got the Six Nations team of the tournament to get through today. It's going to be very exciting. A big thank you to my patrons for their ongoing support. You've been awesome throughout the Six Nations and wow, there were so many phenomenal players in this tournament. I found it pretty much impossible to pick so no wonder I watched every game so many times before putting out my analysis videos on them. Um, I've decided on my team through the naked eye what I saw in my analysis videos and how well everyone performed. If I wasn't sure about how a player went, I resorted to their stats, which were all attained from Ultimate Rugby and the official Six Nations website. Now, just to um, explain my selection criteria, all of my forwards have to have a tackle ratio of 75% or above, as I do think accuracy is highly important for the guys on the pack. You also need to have played three or more games throughout this tournament, as I don't think all the people picking Jonathan Dante are being fair on the other guys who were able to get it done throughout the entire tournament. This team's made up of five Irish players, four, um, four French players there, sorry, three Scottish players, and I've got one representative from England, from Italy, and from Wales. They've all just got one player each. I think I do have to represent every single competing nation, as I don't want to make a cop out and just pick everyone who's been from the winning side. I want to show uh, my knowledge of the whole tournament, so let's start off with the props. And my loose head prop is Andrew Paul. Quarter. He was absolutely phenomenal, man. Um, 363 minutes played of a possible 400 is absolutely immense for a prop. The guy um, had a pretty decent amount of tackles made and three turnovers, one to really just get his team some front football. Um, the Irish had just ridiculous ruck speed throughout the whole tournament and Porter was so good at enabling his backs to have clean ball. That is why he is in this team. Um, he's essentially getting to the stage where he's peerless at his break breakdown at work ethic and of course um, he did run a few meters as well so that's always good to see. To the tight head prop I've gone with Xander Fagerson over in Scotland. France had a wee bit of a revolving door at tight head prop whereas um, obviously Tyg Furlong has been injured. I've gone with Xander Fagerson for his work at the breakdown as well while his 93% tackle ratio is so so good to see. He did win two turnovers making his presence known and he made a very good return from injury. Um, 103 meters isn't too bad either for a prop considering they run in such tight channels. Um, 13 passes from 25 carries, um, that's pretty much half the time he's um, touching the ball, he's passing which is really good to see. Now over at hooker, Dan Sheehan. He was not on the pitch an awful lot, he just played 185 meters because of a few injuries, but when he was on the pitch, he was amazing man. Um, two tries scored against um, England in that man of the match performance when they got the Grand Slam, um, 18 carries, 5 clean breaks, 11 defenders beaten, he was on fire and his line out throwing was so so accurate, I was really glad to see he's done so much work on it since his test debut, he's quickly rising to become one of the world's best hookers, his tackle rate of 22 from 29, um, I don't think we should uh, factor it in too much as he does have a far smaller sample size compared to a lot of the other forwards in this list, so I'm happy to have Dan Sheehan in my team because he he was phenomenal. Now we've got our first French player, Thibaut Flamand at lock. Ahead of the tournament, I wasn't too sure how France were going to cover lock. They've capped a lot of players in this position in the Galtier era. So aside from Romain, Talfa Fanua, and Paul Willemser, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. Thibaut Flamand, he has booked himself on the flight back home to France for the World Cup. He will be that fourth lock for sure. He played every minute available to him in the Six Nations and scored three tries off just 30 carries, 20 passes as well, um, that is a ridiculous amount of passes compared to the amount of carries he's made, 96% um, tackle accuracy as well, he was a real dynamic player in that line out and uh, his work ethic in the open field was so nice to see, especially considering he used to play in the backs as a younger kid. My other lock is Federico Rutza from Italy, um, he really stepped up against England when they needed a leader when Michele Lamaro came off for his HIA and he had a brilliant brilliant game in that one. Rutza kept much of that consistency throughout the whole tournament with 55 from 56 tackles, just one miss in the whole tournament, two turnovers and um, not only did he just make 28 carries but he made more passes than he did carries with 38 phenomenal stuff from the big fella. Um, he's kind of getting to the prime of his career, I've enjoyed watching him over the Six Nations very much so he's going to be my Italian representative. Now over to the blind side I've gone for Jamie 
Ritchie as the only non-Irish player in my loose forwards. Um, Jamie Ritchie once again played 400 minutes in the Six Nations, every single one that was available. Um, he didn't really get to do too much with ball in hand as we can see, but he was a phenomenal leader for Scotland in the tight spaces of the pitch. His five turnovers were, I believe, the most in the tournament. I've got the correction over here to make sure. Um, and 64 from 68 tackles is some pretty good going there. A very high volume of them at very, very good accuracy as well, which is always the key. Um, I've really liked the fact that he's captain Scotland in recent times. It's taken the pressure off a lot of those um, star players and he's just in there to do the dirty stuff, hurt his opponents and talk to the ref with his good, good manners. Um, Jamie Ritchie has had his best season of Test Rugby yet and I'm hoping he's going to have a blinder at the World Cup as well. Now over to seven, Josh van der Fleer, World Player of the Year. Um, I had to have this guy on the team, but I've got a hot take, all right? I believe Josh van der Fleer in 2023 has been better than he was in 2022. He ran the greatest decoy line of all time against England. He scored one try, ran 202 metres, beat eight defenders off 28 carries, and he made more passes than he did carries with 31 in total. Very high tackle accuracy as well that you can see. Nice to see him make a try assist and get three turnovers as well, continuing to the basics. Played every minute available. I don't have to say much more. The stats speak for themselves. Now to round out the forward pack, I've gone for Kalen Doris at number eight. Um, he just came of age in that man in the match performance against France. Phenomenal stuff. A good try to market. Um, got 274 running meters to his name throughout the tournament off a very, very high 54 carries. Didn't quite distribute um, too much for a guy that's a number eight, a key decision maker for the team but it's okay for me. They've got guys like Omahani and Van der Fleer who can help out with that. 50 from 57 tackles as well. Very nice considering the cover defense strategy that the Irish have been using. Now that we've gone through the forward pack to end off with Kalen Doris, let's go to the ad break. Time to start off with halfback now that we're into the backs. It almost feels like a cliche at this point to pick Anton Dupont for some kind of hypothetical team he's eligible for, but come on, man. Antoine Dupont is an absolute legend. He is probably getting to the stage where he's France's greatest ever halfback. And um, with 384 minutes from the possible 400, that says a lot. Um, unless Maxime Luku's on the bench, they just don't want to take him off. Um, his running stats, they were phenomenal of 48 carries, whereas his 280 passes, they were all very, very pinpoint. Um, as a halfback, he does take that very seriously. In his defense, man, he just put up an amazing amount of tackles at such high accuracy for a little dude as well. He's a very strong halfback. 92% tackle accuracy. Like, that's awesome. Look at the volume of them too. Crazy. Three turnovers, one awesome defense and a man of the match performance against Italy well he always shines against the Italians he was the guy who made the most try assists in the tournament as well so I had to put him at nine Reese Webb I thought was really good but you know what as much of a cliche as it is you got to have Anton Dupont in there righto sharpen your pitchforks I've got Owen Farrell at 10 10 is quite honestly the least of England's problems right now their type 5 forwards were very erratic and their loose forwards were far too bulky they didn't quite have the mobility to keep up with the Irish and the French. Owen Farrell though England played off 10 far too much tried to keep everything as creative as possible and considering he didn't really have another playmaker around um, he did a pretty good job the only real complaint of course that I mentioned throughout the tournament was his um, conversion ratio off the tee. His penalty goal ratio though didn't end up being too bad at the end of the day and for a guy that supposedly doesn't have a very good running game he's put up some very good numbers there with 187 meters and three defenders beaten off 28 carries. His 92 passes as well, they were all phenomenal. He did a great job sending people into space and trying to get the forwards to mix it up as best they could. Um, for everything that was in his control, he did a very nice job with the game management. And though a lot of people try to say he's a bad defender, his stats aren't awful for defense either. 76% and four turnovers won. Um, that's that's why I think he's such a good center because he can just plug that hole in defense and just smash you backwards. Um, the fact that he was in the 10 channel, saw him get carried back over the gain line a fair few times by the attackers. So I think that's why the stats are a little bit down. Um, his game management was sublime throughout the tournament. That's the most important part of being the 10. So I've 
I've got Owen Farrell in my team as the sole English representative. Now we get to the left wing, Mac Hansen, man. Um, he's got half of his career tries within this one tournament, and he made two man of the match performances in a thrilling contemporary outing. Um, he also ran 330 meters off 41 carries, and he's passing a crazy amount for a winger. Um, 35 passes and six offloads, so literally half the amount of time he touched the ball. He was getting it out to somebody else. Made a try assist too, which was very good to see, and he won four turnovers on defense. What a tournament for Mac Hansen, man, honestly. He was amazing. Now over to um, inside center, Joe Hawkins is my Welsh representative in the team. Um, a lot of people will be a bit angry at me for not going for Bundy Arkey, Jonathan Donte, but for a guy that's very new to test rugby, Joe Hawkins is looking like a complete package aside from his tackle accuracy, which will of course go up with age as he becomes a more experienced player. Um, he is getting quite close to 100 kgs and he's six foot, so even though he's more of a 10 than he is a 12, he can still get you over the gain line and get the front football after a scrum. His running stats, pretty good stuff, 200 78 meters off 39 carries and he was passing a fair bit 29 times three turnovers one as well he's looking promising on the defense he just needs to kind of get used to test rugby i believe as he is only 20 years old um wales they don't have too many positives, but at the end of the tournament, they were looking like a far better team. And Joe Hawkins, he was at the center of it all, pun not intended. He is going to become one heck of a player as the years go by. Over to number 13, to plug that defensive hole, I've got Hugh Jones in to help him. Jones was looking like he was going to be the highest try score of the tournament with four, though another player turned up to take the title from him. 87% tackle ratio, awesome stuff, won a turnover. And just look at the rest of those running stats. The dude a freak. I've really enjoyed him in combination with Sione Tui Pilotu. Um, I chose to go for um, Hawkins rather over Tui Pilotu because he beat Tui Pilotu for a fair few stats. Um, Jones is definitely the show pony off that center duo and seeing the cohesion between them brought out the best in Jones. This is the best season he's had since 2016. He was an absolute freak in this tournament. 25 passes, three offload off just 31 carries. Nearly half the time he has the ball, he's getting it out wide to somebody. What a year he's had so far. Now we make up for my lack of French players in the team so far. At 14, I've got Damien Peno. He's another one of the players who played every single minute of the tournament, and he was the top try scorer of the tournament with five tries. 399 meters run, 25 defenders beat, and seven clean breaks, 27 carries. Only having the ball in your hand to go forward 27 times and that's what you come up with, it's freakish. Um, a lot of passes as well for a winger. That use of a centre on the wing for France continues to be a real highlight of their game. I won't go at him too hard for tackle accuracy either as when you're a winger you don't really have much control over what's coming at you. You just kind of got to do what you can and even if he's not getting the tackles, um, he is slowing opponents down so his team can stop attacking players. One turnover as well, pretty good to see. Pino is very much on his way to becoming France's highest ever try scorer, I believe. He's had one heck of a tournament, and wow, just a huge amount of congratulations to him for playing so well. Now, my player of the tournament, Tomar Ramos. I found it so hard to choose between him and Hugo Keenan. Keenan was definitely the guy with the inside running after the first three rounds, but after that man of the match performance against England, I had to go with Tomar Ramos to keep Melvin Jaminet out of the starting 15. You are doing something very special. He was the top point scorer of the tournament with 84. Not only was he doing well off the tee and getting a lot of points, but he was doing it with such a high accuracy. Got three tries for himself as well. Ran over 500 meters off just 48 carries. Look at all defenders he's beating in the killing breaks. Um, 55 passes, more passes than he had carries. Um, two try assists. I don't think we'll complain too much about his tackle accuracy either because he's got such a low sample size. Tomar Ramos, I think, was that last piece of the puzzle for the French attack. They need to basically run their attack off every possible option in the backfield aside from the number 11, and Tomar Ramos does that beautifully. They can 
now run off a 12 and Jonathan Dante at first receiver. They can have Fiku at first receiver, Intermac and Peno at first receiver, and Tomar Ramos at first receiver. After doing a lot of his um, defensive work at Toulouse, at 27 years old, he's finally fulfilled his potential, and he doesn't even have to look to see where Intermac or DuPont is. He knows where his clubmates are always going to be on the pitch. Tomar Ramos, what a tournament he had. He is my player of the tournament. He was amazing. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I've just got a recap of the whole team flashing by, as you can see. You can um, visit me over on Instagram and over on Twitter if you want to support me over on those platforms. And of course, you could either join my Patreon or make a one-off donation to me over PayPal if you want to see my channel continue to grow. It is my full-time job. I'm going to try a five videos coming out per week. And I uh, thank you very much for watching this one once again, team. Cheers from Max.